Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Take 10 with the counseling team on May 19th. Before we begin the session, a few housekeeping items for our listeners. First, the session is being recorded. Recording has started now, and we will be posting this online for later listening. You can find the link on the NLC website. Uh, all you have to do is just put in the search bar, take 10, it'll take you right to that link. Or if you're on YouTube, just pop over to Northern Lakes College Counseling and you will find all of our recordings there. Secondly, another member of our team is monitoring the chat bar in the session. Uh, just a heads up that this chat bar will not appear in the recording. Of course, we always encourage you to engage with us. We welcome any questions or comments throughout the webinar. Um, we do want to remind you, however, that these chats are not confidential spaces. They can be seen by our moderators and our other participants. So if you do have something that you want to connect with us on a personal issue, simply send us a private chat. You can send one to myself or any other moderator that you see in there and we'll arrange a time offline to chat with you. The close of the session, we'll stop the recording and also give you time to ask some questions as well. So with all that in mind, let's get rolling. So welcome to Take 10 with the NLC Counseling Team. This is where each week a member of the team comes online, we pop by and we answer some of the questions that we get asked most by students. My name is Sherry, I'm the Chair of the Counseling Department at Northern Lakes College and I will be your host for today's webinar. Today we're going to talk about pandemic fatigue and how to find your new normal. The question that we're addressing today is one that we've been hearing a lot from our students. We get in emails, we get in phone calls, we get in our sessions, and time and time again, we're hearing this statement phrased in many different ways. I'm tired of hearing about and talking about COVID, and yet I feel stuck. How do I kickstart my life? We wanna begin by taking a look at some of the common reactions as we're dealing with COVID-19. Then we're gonna get into talking about pandemic fatigue, what that is, and what you can do to help, and how you can kickstart your life with some practical tips and tricks. So we begin first by talking about common reactions in dealing with COVID-19. You know, we're all going through this enormous life event right now, um, once in a lifetime potentially. And sometimes the enormity of that situation uh, can be overwhelming. And likewise, it can make us feel like there's no normal in the midst of this. And that everything is up in the air and everything is chaotic and everything is stressful. So what I wanted to do is just take a quick moment and remind us of some of the normal reactions to this very abnormal situation that we find ourselves in. So many people right now over the last eight weeks in Alberta when we've been shut down, um, for lack of a better per term, our, our social distancing, our physical distancing, quarantine, all these new languages around flattening the curve and masks. I never thought of masks before. You know, so some of these common reactions that people are reporting are anxiety, worry, panic, feeling of helplessness, social withdrawal, difficulty concentrating, maybe they're not sleeping as well as they used to, maybe they're sleeping way more than they used to, maybe they're having dreams, any sleep disruption there, hypervigilance, always wanting the most up-to-date information, looking at what everybody else is doing, almost obsessing over some of these details and information around the, uh, the pandemic. Maybe they've got a short fuse, that anger, and xenophobia, so being afraid um, to go out and to socialize and what those situations might look like. Those are very common reactions that a lot of people are faced with right now and are dealing with. Um, so it's important to recognize what's normal right now even in abnormal situations. So what I wanna talk about now is pandemic fatigue. What is it? You know, there's a lot of different terms that have been floating around lately, quarantine fatigue, um, COVID withdrawals, and there's so many, and, and I don't know about you, but if you're looking through that Facebook feed, you're looking online, it, th there's new languages it seems. So one of the, the one that's really come out that people are talking about is pandemic fatigue. And what is it? 
So it's that feeling of complete exhaustion. You're tired, but you don't know why. Maybe you have difficulty making decisions. Another sign of this might be disengagement with regular activities. So that's not limited with just things that are shut down because of uh, quarantine measures or you know measures, uh, restrictions that have been placed on activities, but it's about your personal desire to engage with your regular activities. Pandemic fatigue can cause low mood, emotional overload, that feeling of being stuck. And it's important to remember that this too is a very normal reaction to some very abnormal circumstances that we find ourselves in. So what causes it? One of the things that we're learning right now in the lure is that it, it can be caused by a duration of an event. You know, sometimes we talk about a sprint and a marathon. And right now, it feels like we've moved from that sprint stage of maybe it'll be a week, maybe it'll be two weeks, I'll be back to work soon. I don't know about you, but I've been working in my basement on a laptop propped up with my keyboard on a stool in this crazy configuration. This is my new normal. And what was okay for a week or two, you know, we're eight weeks in. That's a massive disruption to a normal routine. Decision-making fatigue. We never used to have to think about, is it safe for me to grab this can off of the shelf at the grocery store or not? Or am I following the arrows in the row, in the aisle like I should? We haven't had to think about how close we're standing next to our neighbor when we're outside talking, when we're walking our dogs. We haven't had to think about going through checkpoints, getting in and out of our communities. There are so many activities that we do on a regular basis that are automatic, that we don't have to make conscious decisions about. And now we do, and it can lead us to decision-making fatigue. Sometimes this is also caused by a withdrawal from supports. I have a great relationship with my in-laws. And I miss them. You know, I'm used to just popping by, them popping by here, all those things. You know, that's an example for me that's personal of the support that's been withdrawn from me or changed as a result of the circumstances we find ourselves in. And it can certainly compound what we're feeling. And again, to bring us back to that sprint or marathon, running out of steam with using our regular coping strategies. You know, I was okay to stand at my desk and just, um, eat as I go and, and you know, kind of on the fly adapt. Well, now that's getting harder and harder. I'm running out of steam. That sprint is turning into a marathon and it's a different pace. Sprinters do not train for the same event in the same way that a marathon runner does. So let's take a look first at some things that won't help, but then let's get into some really practical things that will help in overcoming this feeling of pandemic fatigue. So things that won't help. Guilt. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Shame. You shouldn't be feeling this way. I can't believe they're not feeling this way. I can't believe they're okay. They shouldn't be okay. They got all this stuff. Ignoring the issue. That also won't help. Telling yourself to just get over it. It's such a slippery slope when we have these expectations of ourselves. And I am 36 years old and I've never been through a pandemic before. I don't have this toolbox already set up for me to use. So what I need are things that can help. So I'm going to share with you a few things that I've found that are helping me, that the literature, that the mental health experts are telling us really can help with this feeling of pandemic fatigue. And then hopefully it'll give you a chance to kickstart your life with some of these practical skills. So let's move on to that. So here's what can help, is acknowledging how you're feeling. I'm stuck. You know, we go back to that first question that we had. Um, I'm tired of hearing and talking about COVID. I want to get on my life, but I feel stuck. Great. We're acknowledging how we are feeling. We're feeling stuck. We're feeling restless. We're feeling cooped up. We're feeling like we have a lack of control. 
We're feeling like we need more information. We're feeling like freedoms have been taken away. Acknowledge how you are feeling. Maybe you haven't done that before. Today's a great opportunity to do that. I'm sad that. I'm frustrated that. I'm annoyed by. Acknowledge how you're feeling. We also want to understand what normal reactions can look like. You know, we've talked about that at the start. You're going to have these slides to refer back to. Please feel free. Some, some of what you're feeling may be normal reactions. And I want to encourage you to talk to people that you trust. That's one of the things that can really help here. Even if it's that, that venting, that release, you know, where you're not stuck in your own head about it, but you can talk to somebody that trusts, that knows you well enough to speak into your life, to listen compassionately. And all these are good things, but really what I want to encourage you to do is this last bullet point here is to take control of your new normal. We don't know how long this is all going to last. There's a phased approach for reopening the economy. There's all these other bits of information that are coming out. And yet we know that we're not going to return exactly how it was before because we are not this we were before. I now understand different risks. I now understand different, um, different pieces of information about COVID-19 and the pandemic, how it affects my children, how it affects my education, how it affects my finances. I have a new awareness. And so I'm changed going back even into the same circumstances. So I want to encourage you to take control of your new normal, to build a future that fits for you. So I'm going to talk about that just really quickly here in a moment. Before I do that, I do want to remind you that you don't have to do any of this alone. So at Northern Lakes College, if you're a student with us, you have the incredible opportunity to meet with one of our counseling team. This is free of charge for you. It is a confidential service. We believe in you as students. And we know how hard your educational journey is. And so we want to ensure that you have the supports you need to succeed. So our counselors are your allies. They're your advocates. They're your sounding boards. They're your confidential spaces where you can process these difficult things that you're going on with your life so that we can help you and empower you to address some of the barriers that you're facing that might be getting in the way of your academic success. So I want to encourage you to reach out to a member of our team. If you're finding this webinar, it's probably because you found our website or you received a promotion in your email about counseling services in our Take 10 webinars. All of our contact information is on there. So it's counseling at northernlakescollege.ca. Counseling with two L's, C-O-U-N-S-E-L-L-I-N-G at northernlakescollege.ca. Additionally, the province of Alberta has some extra resources here for you. 24 hours, seven days a week. If it is 2 a.m. and you are freaking out and you are overwhelmed, or you can't sleep for the fifth night in a row, and you have nobody to talk to, and you're just scared, and you're worried, and you're panicking, please reach out. You are not alone. I'm going back to the slide just for a moment to leave you with that, that last bullet point of take control of your new normal. I'm flipping ahead here to a quote that's really resonated with me in going through this whole situation. And that's that it's, uh, I'm not even going to say the name because I always see it written down. You know, Socrates, Socrates, everybody's got their own interpretation of it. But he's a great philosopher. And uh, this is a quote that I have hanging on my wall here. And uh, it's really resonated with me. It says, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. I want to encourage you to build your new normal. You can do it, and you don't have to do it alone. I want to thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Next week, we will be back. We've got one of our amazing counselors, Karen Campbell, is going to be joining us and talking about stress 
and anxiety in dealing with all the bad news that we hear. One of the questions we hear a lot from students, especially in the last week, is, you know, I was barely hanging on by a thread and then this uh, snowbirds crash happened. And now I can't stop thinking about it. Or I'm barely hanging on going through this pandemic. And now I've got the emergency alerts going off on my phone about fires and floods. How do I deal with my stress and anxiety in the middle of that? So she's going to be back. She's going to give you some great tips and strategies, 10 minutes of your time that will really, really help you. So I hope you will join us then. Again, this, uh, this session is recorded. It's available to you on our website. And there you can also find links to our previous episodes as well. Thank you for joining us today. I'm going to stop the recording now. If there are any questions, I'm going to stay on the line here for a little bit. Thank you.